Hi, everybody. <coughs> All right. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? today and kind of unprepared. Hi Sherry, Yasmin, Cheryl, Vandana, my moderators, thank you for being here today. And Selena, nice to see you. Um, We have some fun things to talk about today, and um, I want to thank those of you who are my patrons. But I don't. I did give some specific thanks in my last video, so I didn't have a create. Um, I didn't make a a sign. You'll have to forgive me. I may not be quite on top of my normal game today. It's extremely smoky here. I'm in Portland, Oregon. Hi, Lori. Uh, and it's extremely smoky here. Um, yay from Wyoming. Angel, CE Angel. Um, hi, Lucia, Brenda, Doris, nice to see you, Ellen. But yeah, you know, I live in an area where right now we have the highest pollution air pollution of anywhere in the country because of the fires. It's really, really bad. So I still wanted to be here because um, I made a commitment to be here, number one. But number two, it's just fun. And it's important to still try to maintain some sense of normalcy <laughs> amidst all of this stuff. So hi, Sharon. I'm glad you have your wine. <laughs> Good for you. And hello from Massachusetts. Kim, nice to see you here today. Uh, the fires currently are a miles, like a few miles away from me, but the zone, the evacuation zone is only a couple miles from me, but it looks really bad on a map. But honestly, if you look at the layout of the land, we, it's not very likely they're going to evacuate my, um, now knocking on wood, because, you know, that's, famous last words, right? But it's not that likely, but who knows? <laughs> um, so, oh, Aust oh, some from Perth. Hi, Janie. Thank you. Hi, Brenda. Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Diane. Thanks for coming, you guys. So the first thing I want to talk about today is, hi, Tammy. Nice to see you. Um, I did some resin and I want to really share, uh, I, I'm not a big huge resin person but I'm really loving this resin. This is the Artist Resin by Counterculture DIY and I'm really enjoying this. It was easy to work with. It set up pretty fast and um, dried clear. I had literally no pock marks. Um, with either of the projects that I did. Usually, sometimes you get those little little pins or something, but I did this um, for someone who bought this piece and I thought it just needed resin. Hi, Deanne. S Thank you, Phyllis. That's so nice. Um, yeah, Selena. I, I know, it's just, it's terrible. I don't, it's, we're just, 
all of us out here in California, there's so many places on fire right now. So praying for all of us to recover and do better. Uh, but I thought this would help, you know, just do something fun and take my mind off all of the, the bad stuff for a minute. So anyway, this is a beautiful piece. I want to show you, uh, here's the other resin piece that I did. And let me find it here. <laughs> so look at this sculpted panel. Um, I'm not sure if you can see all of the beautiful parts of this. This is just lovely. I think this would look great in a floating frame, but I just used all the colors of these rich um, metal colors all in here. Uh, the espresso in bronze, um, and then this is a sculpted panel, and I talked about these last week, so I wanted to make, I wanted to show you the results. Um, for those of you that missed last week, these are the panels that I'm talking about, and uh, they're MDF, but they're sculpted, so you can see they have a texture to them, and um, sculptedpanels.com is where you get these, and, you know, they have the thickness rating and the size. This is an 8-inch. Um, but yeah, so one of the things I'm going to do today is pour on one of these, and that's what I did with this one, which I just love the way it turned out. I think it's so, so pretty. Um, hi, Christina. Nice to see you. So, hi, Vicki. Yeah, this is such a pretty, a pretty painting, and... Uh, Honestly, gosh, I'm so scattered. I wanted to show you the results from last week, so if you just hold one second, I'm going to find the paintings from last week. Oh my gosh, let's see. Oh, it turned out so pretty. So the first thing I did... Oh! So I use the same, these, these are the same colors as the sculpt panel, and uh, I just wanted to show you, it's basically the difference between resin and not resin. But see how pretty this painting turned out. It's very rich and textured, it's a dip with all of the same colors that I used for this panel, but you can see the panel, the resin just adds a quality to it. And um, this painting would be really pretty with resin too. So anyway, that counterculture DIY resin, I'm really enjoying using that. Um, and that little brown painting is sold, but the pan this is not sold if you're interested. Okay, results from last week. Ooh, <laughs> this one is so pretty. Look at this, guys. Look at this one. Look at the shimmer of that high flow down in the corner here. It's ridiculous. Hi, Deborah. It's, this is just like, to me, like, just like electricity. It just turned out so, so pretty. Um, yeah, I just thought this one is just really, really fun and beautiful. This 16 by 20, and um, I think a glossy varnish would look gorgeous on this one, too. So if you're interested, this one is available. You can PM me, uh, email me, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, yeah. So, thanks for being with me last week to make that beautiful painting. And then this one, <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw. This was the tree that I imagined. 
and let's see. See if I can get you out a little bit. Or in a little bit. I don't know. I never know what I'm doing for some reason with those. But yeah, um, this tree is so pretty. And this high flow right here, oh my gosh. It is just as pretty. And remember I told you I thought I layered, I laid the Payne's Gray down under here. And then the plan was to kind of get it to make little, I just want it to look like snow on top of, um, sitting on top of the earth and I think it did kind of make that effect so that was my plan for that and I really like it I didn't get a lot of fractals there but I do love this I really would like to embellish this tree further um, yeah but I really did like the way that turned out this is a 24 by 24 gallery wrapped and this one is still available as well so sorry for all the shaking let's see Okay. Hi, Deborah from New York. Okay, so that's all the paintings to show for right now. Next thing I wanted to say is, did you guys see, uh, I got the coolest thing at Dick Blick, and I wanted to show you. <laughs> so, have you guys seen these? They're meant to go on their Sennelier. Sennelier, 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 I'm not French, I don't know, but they're meant to go on those uh, pouch, but I thought, I think they'll go on Artezas, <laughs> so basically they're paint tips, and so cool because if you're interested in doing some abstract stuff, like I've been interested in doing some abstracts, uh, lately, some mixed media stuff, or even as just kind of like a fun way to finish. This just occurred to me, so I just removed the tip of this, and then you can add the tip onto this pouch. I There's an Arteza link in my description box if you want to buy these pouch paints, which they're, I love the pouch paints by Arteza. I'm going to actually, hold on a second. Zooming in just a little bit more so you can really see what's up. Um, but yeah, so the effects here, and I haven't tried this one yet. Fractals, uh, Brenda, fractals, they, man, you could do a whole video or a whole series on fractals. There's a lot of ways to make them, but the high flow. High Flow by Golden has a tendency to make fractals, so I use that a lot to make fractals. So anyway, I want to show, I'm going to show you really quick. Um, again, I am not very organized right now, sorry. But Just to give you an example, I thought these were fun and, you know, I'm always looking for fun ways to like improve my paintings, especially embellish. Now, if you saw my bird painting, or Sandra Lett uses this a lot too. For those of you who didn't catch my last video, we did an awesome collab, her and I. But she uses these Deco Art Extreme Sheen uh, tips. Or, yeah, now you, those are in my shop if you're interested. This tip is awesome. It has a long needle that points down into the, uh, the tip here so it doesn't get clogged, which is amazing. And then it just, this just gives you like a really fine line and you can just basically pop it on the end of any one of these uh, two ounce bottles by DecoArt. So 
I when I saw this and I've done a little bit of work with them, I thought, oh, that's really fun. You know, it does take a little bit to figure out how to manage them. Um, I have a whole playlist, Cheryl, on fractals. A whole playlist. But here, look. I, I I'm. Ooh. Okay, so this is like a flat line. Oh my gosh, how pretty. So I think that would be part of it too, is that you'd want to make sure you have this all. Again, you know, paint decorating, I mean cake decorating is uh, quite a skill, so I don't know, this might be fun though. Like as a little way to like add some little lines at the end or I don't know, it just made me think about possibilities for adding texture and possibly outlining, uh, embellishing, things like that. And like I said, you can just screw them on and they come all these different uh, tips. So if you're interested, check them out. DickBlick.com I think is where you can buy them unless you have a Dick Blick at your, you know, locally like I do. <clears throat> So that's just one fun little thing I wanted to show you today. I try to try to show some new products because it's fun to show. All right, enough with that. Now, next up, paints. Mysterious blue. <laughs> oh my gosh! Trust me when I tell you. This was not all of the testing. This was, initially I'd come up with the colors for Mysterious Blue, and um, it was quite complex, the recipe. But I thought about it, and one thing, I was kind of uh, listening to other people. Hi, Cynthia. Nice to see you here. Hi, Angela. Um, one thing I was kind of listening to other people say is that some people's Mysterious Blue recipe was really complicated. I, ha I, I did not look at anyone else's Mysterious Blue recipe, so if I'm making claims that aren't accurate, please forgive me. I really don't know. I didn't look at anyone else's recipe. I just know uh, by people telling me that other people have done the Mysterious Blue. So what I did was I took the Mysterious Blue and I wanted to make, this is the original bottle and this is the original color still. Um, so I took this paint and made a swipe and then I just practiced. I practiced and I wanted to try to come up with a formula that was the least amount of ingredients to get the most similar effects. So um, that's, what, that's what I did. And this is the original Mysterious Blue, and this is the Mysterious Blue that I created. And literally, they're virtually identical. They dried almost exactly the same. So I'm going to share with you that recipe. I gave it to Cheryl, um, but I'm, I'll say it out loud here if you want to know the recipe. Um, it's two tablespoons. And this is just the quantity I made, and beyond that I can't help you. You can make it bigger or more or less if you want. But it's two tablespoons of Amsterdam Acrylic 557, and I think that's the first thing I noticed when I did this paint. I thought, oh my god, this is like the base color of Mysterious Blue, basically. And um, it's greenish blue, number 557, Amsterdam Acrylic. And then... It is a quarter teaspoon of Green Sparkle by Bling It. Uh, the green Sparkle, which is like an interference without any pigment in it. I don't think it's just the sparkle part. By Bling It, and that's by Color Art. That's Leslie Onstead's um, Color Art. www.colorart.com. And that's Color Art to, with the E on the end of it.com. So, two tablespoons of that, a quarter teaspoon of the green sparkle, and then the last ingredient is 14 drops. I'm sorry, 20 drops of bone black, 
golden fluid bone black. And then I just took GAC 800 or um, Golden's pouring medium and I added that to consistency to make the same consistency as what you would buy in the bottle. Now, uh, questions. If you guys have any questions, um, the main thing about it is you can substitute a black paint for this instead of the drops of this, but the black paint added an opacity that I didn't like. It turned, uh, it turned this color very, very, very uh, opaque and um, I, it was hard to get the proportions correct, but I really, really like these proportions and it really works. So I hope you enjoy that version and we will use it today in our pour. Hi Tish. Tish with Artist Haven is here. Nice to see you Tish. So here's our colors today. Our colors today, well pouring medium to paint carry is um, whenever I use this it kind of depends on your pouring medium but I use like 50-50, 50% this to 50% Floetrol, and then you add water as needed for the effects that you're trying to create. Like if you're doing a swipe, you want something that's a lot thinner. Um, if you're doing a ring pour, something that's thicker. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> I'm going to have to drink tea. <clears throat> Hold on. Oh, gosh my throat. Oh, Nikki, I'm so happy. Nikki Hussey's here, Nikki D. Art. And um, Deborah, I'm so glad you practiced fractals. I hope it worked for you. There's a few different ways to make fractals, but um, you know, the easiest way is just using the high flow, of course. So, color palette. I had berries on the brain. People, berry. Here's all the beautiful colors we're going to mess with today, and they're all berries, uh, berry color, just crimsons and berries. Um, these are basically all of the colors that I'm going to use today. I had to keep these covered because <clears throat> there's so much ash in the air that the ash from the fires are like settling in my paint and I noticed they were starting to clump up within just a short time of mixing so yeah it's crazy it's crazy what we're going to do right now really <clears throat> and then I made this Payne's gray um, as well and you guys I know have you ever use these color mixing guides. It's okay, Christina. I know. I'm I'm surviving, but um, I'm telling you, I woke up today and my eyes were crusted <laughs> shut and I had crusty fluid coming out of my ears. So it's just crazy. And I tried to get this air purifier thing and of course they're sold out all over the Portland metro area even all the way down to Salem and up to Washington, it's crazy. Everyone bought them up, so, um, you know, we do the best we can. And if it gets too bad, I'll leave, you know. I'll, I'll leave if it gets too terrible. So, um, anyway, color mixing guide. I've never really, really used one of these. Today I did. I really literally went and found the color that I wanted on here. So... Um, like this one is a color that I really wanted to make and at the moment I think it's this yeah so I took alizarin crimson that's the dominant color basically and I followed it over and then phthalo green down here is the color so I mixed alizarin crimson which you don't have to mix with a little white until it made that color and then I took the phthalo green until it made that color with a little bit of white. And then I mixed the two together until I got this shade. 
and this is the shade it made. So I'm pretty excited because I feel like what couldn't you do? <laughs> I don't know. It just like oh, I thought oh my gosh, there's so many things that I've never really formulated it that way because I always thought it was oh, why does a poor painter need that? <laughs> but yeah, and it was really fun to be able to make all the colors I wanted to make today. And uh, Christina Welsh, it made me think of you because I thought, ooh, this is why she does this. Because it's so fun. Yeah, it just felt magical to be able to mix up the colors and uh, play with the pigments. And, um, and I like mixing colors anyway, but this was really cool. And then I thought, oh, and she gets to come up with the cool names. <laughs> all the cool names of everything so I made up berry colors strawberry blueberry boysenberry blackberry and then I made a few pop colors um, to like like well this would be like a cherry a bright cherry color um, most of these are just handmade um, Actually, all of these are handmade. So, well, that one even has a little <clears throat> pigment sitting on the top of it, doesn't it? <laughs> well, you guys are cute. I get a lot of people in my life wanting me to cook for them. It is definitely something that I deal with in my life. What's funny is when, here's something personal about my life, you guys. After I, me and my ex-husband departed, uh, we parted ways, you know, happily. He's still my family and good friend and everything, but I started dating for the first time at 35, really. And, oh my god, I used to cook for men all day long. I used to cook for them and I think, you know, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach and all that stuff. And you know how long that lasted? <laughs> After a while, just getting burned, dating, and all that stuff, I just thought, oh, man, you have to work for it for me to cook for you. And then I just stopped. I stopped cooking because I, I was already doing it for a living, too, you know. And so I just stopped completely stopped cooking for men and then I do it only for people I really love now and for my friends because yeah and for my job too this is the mysterious blue by the way I want to show you yeah Christine I worked at a bakery too for a while um, it was really fun and exhausting and what I found is I just didn't like to cook 40 mousse torts and 20 apple pies and 32 chocolate cakes. I really like making more artisan, handmade, one or two beautiful things. And I think that's why I've never expanded my career. Um, because I just, I really enjoy just the small process of making one thing just really perfectly. Um, and I'm a perfectionist too, so that always makes it hard. I'm having to add the water a little bit because the Mysterious is one I made a couple days ago. Oh, I know, Vandana. I definitely, definitely, definitely want you to cook for me. I want Vandana to cook for me because she, she's showing me some of her Indian food this week. I was drooling and I cooked for an Indian family for five years. It was amazing, but... Um, I, you know, I don't cook all the time Indian food. Thank you for letting me uh, take the time to adjust these paints because this mysterious it was just way too thick. And um, I think I made my other paints a little thinner consistency today. And this one was made a few days ago. So I want to make sure all my paints are the same consistency. I'm so glad to see you all here today. Yep, Tish is a baker. Oh my gosh. And now I can't have any gluten, so I'm totally gluten free. 
and uh, that really changed baking for me and my love of baking. Um, in one way, it opened up a whole new possibility, and in other ways, I just felt pissed off. <laughs> Truthfully. So. Alright, let me... Well, Shelly, I'll tell you about Indian food. I didn't know, had never even eaten Indian food but once or twice, and then I, I cooked for an Indian family, and at first they said, oh, we don't want our Indian favorites. But And I said, great, because I don't know how to cook them. <laughs> and then after that, a month or two went by, and they started missing stuff. So they actually sent their mom over from India to teach me some of their family favorites, and I spent time learning them and um, yeah it was a really fun journey for me this is an 18 by 24 canvas just so you guys know what we're working with here and I love a cream puff, you know, love me a good cream puff. There's just some things that are not the same, gluten-free, they're just not, um, but I, I'm learning to accept it. It changed my life. Going gluten-free, uh, I was almost bedridden before I went gluten-free, and within two years, I became not bedridden, and... Yeah, I pretty much changed my whole life. So every time I think of it, I want to eat something with wheat in it, I think of that. Mm. Deborah, the recipe for the Payne's Gray today pretty much changes every every time. Um, but today's Payne's Gray is anthraquinone blue, golden fluid, bone black, and... Um, having a total brain fade. Prussian blue. So that's that's what we're going, that's what we're working with right now for the Payne's Gray for today. Also really, I made a pearl white, by the way, as well. And I really wanted to real quick. Have you guys tried this chroma molten metal? I really, really, really loved it. I used it in that panel I just showed you. And I just think it turned out so pretty when it dried. I was just blown away. <laughs> Carrie, I know I make gluten-free bread that's pretty good and I can buy maybe one or two kinds but for the most part gluten free bread is not great but you know your taste buds also start to change over time what's funny and don't I hope none of my clients are uh, listening right now but sometimes I, <laughs> when I went gluten free I started cooking gluten free for my clients too and they don't even realize it <laughs> it's just, they just go with the flow of it and it's kind of funny. I'm like, well, you don't know you're gluten-free, but you are. <laughs> so, that's pretty. I'm going to do something I never do today, you guys. And I'm going to add silicone to one of my colors. Just one. Um... Maybe to this one, actually. Just because I've just been thinking about these cells. I don't know. But I'm using this little 1,000 count silicone or whatever. 
it's like some silicone oil that you buy. You know, I bought it years ago and I've barely even used it because I don't use a lot of silicone, but I'm just hoping that might encourage just a few little random cells. I'm not a huge fan of silicone. I don't like cleaning it off. And uh, there we go. So much paint here. There's so many colors here tonight, you guys. It's kind of ridiculous, truthfully. I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. All right. There we go. I want to make sure you guys can see everything that I'm doing. <laughs> Angela, I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds fun. <laughs> Ooh, -wee, that tea is good. That is my favorite tea. Turmeric ginger with a uh, raw honey. Oh, so good. Hi, Susie. Okay, paint. Here we go. So many colors here, you guys. It was really fun making all this by by hand. I usually do custom make my paints, but I don't always pick a color from a chart and then create that color. So I just found it to be really fun to do that. looking forward to this all day. I don't even know, you know, painting may not turn out or whatever, but it's just, I needed this relief from thinking about the fires and everything. I just couldn't wait to paint all day. <laughs> That's the truth of that. I just could not wait. white that I made with pearl and um, let's see titanium white pearl and blue pearl that's pretty much it hi Sherry thank you for coming today all right the next color is Let's add a little bit of this deep molten paint. I don't want to add a ton. Wow, you can already see the silicone in that. It's just, it's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> I'm kind of scared all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, Heather, maybe you shouldn't have done that. But oh well. We'll see. It might be pretty. Even though I'm not a huge, huge fan of silicone. Maybe we need one little kiss of purple down there, too. Here's our mysterious blue. Unfortunately, because I layered it this way, it might get lost. But we could do two paintings today. I don't have to do every single color. And 
And then I think we should do a little kiss of, maybe we'll do a kiss of this mysterious down here or along the side or something. Be pretty. I think this is the first day I haven't mixed up gold in the history of my channel or something, no? Maybe not the history of my channel, but oh my gosh, it feels like it. Hi, Christine. You guys, if you uh, like this channel, you like what you see, and you, you want to keep coming back, uh, please support the channel. You can do that by Amazon shopping my link. That's a great way. You can also do it by sending me a tip in my tip jar. That's an awesome way, too. And there's a link in my description box for PayPal to leave a tip. And the other way is to share, watch, and support the channel by you know, just joining, coming in, and watching the videos, hitting subscribe. So when my videos do come out that people watch them and the algorithm finds my channel important. You know, that's the world we live in. Our whole world is run by algorithms, unfortunately. Uh, you can also donate Super Chat, which is a fun way to do it during a live. Um, and you can be acknowledged live for your donation. And you can also buy art. Let's not forget, you can buy art. And art is a great way to support Aw, thank you, Rocket Sauce. Aw, every single donation helps, and I appreciate it so much. Thanks to all of you who donate. Um, so you might, this looks like a hot mess. <laughs> I gotta tell you, this is, this is uh, not looking... Amazing. Aw, oh, Christina, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You guys, this grate I'm working on was a donation by Christina as well. And the red in here, that bright red, is the base of uh, Christina's porridge posse paints, which are freaking awesome. I love those paints. Like, I cannot wait to try the fall colors. Um, if you missed it, I did a whole live using all of her paints, and it was pretty special. Uh, the results were pretty special, so definitely check that out. And that was just a couple of weeks back. Two weeks back, I think. Uh, Brenda, thank you. Brenda has a couple of special pieces of my art, for sure. And... Hold on, I gotta drink some tea still. Alright, this looks crazy. And before y'all think I'm just insane, let me, I'm gonna take a little bit of this Payne's Gray. And I'm going to really, it's pretty thin, but it's not as thin as I want it to be for this, uh, for a swipe. <clears throat> and so I just take a little bit of that and I just add a little shot of water in there. And for those of you who are having trouble getting cells um, or lacing in your swipes, this is one way to really help that process is make sure your paint is thin enough. Now I made that a little too thin, so I'm gonna add a little bit back in. That's right, it needs to be kind of runny, so that's just the best way to get those swipes. Christina Bean, thank you so much. Aw, I know Christine, you just do it because you love, your Christine is my sister, sister. She's the sister I never got to have. I love you, my sister. Okay, 
So we could do a big swipe like down, but one thing I do like about, I like it when a swipe is more interesting and, and more interesting shapes are created than just the straight swipe. And I know people, um, you know, they like to do those straight swipes and that's fine too. But I like to cut all these different kinds of plastics and use all different sorts of shapes. Like here's a round shape at the end. And you can just keep using them and using them and using them and using them. And these are the uh, plastics that come between the, paint, the canvases when you order them by mail. Um, so I'm going to start. Oh, I need a swipe color. <laughs> I got too ahead of myself there. Here we go. Well, Everett, there's no direction. I haven't let anyone know what direction it's going, except for they do know that I'm doing a swipe. That is one thing that's definitely, definitely happening. Um, that's pretty much all anybody knows at this point. I just have this in my mind for some reason, this uh, process and these colors. I don't know why. Hi, Andrew. Nice to see you. So, I'm going to just, I use these over and over, and then I find even like the crunchy little bits on the end of here kind of, it tends to make new shapes and stuff. It's not perfect, and I think I kind of like the imperfection of the shapes that get created. Now, I do need, like I said, I do need some paper towel. That is, it is best to use paper towel for this part because otherwise you end up really messing up a lot of uh, towels. Um. <laughs> Nikki, you, you use cut up x-rays? Aren't you fancy? <laughs> She, she's like, I use dollar bills. <laughs> I just use dollar bills to swipe with. I'm G like that, G'd up like that, she says. <laughs> so luckily, all of the, most of the colors that we use today can absolutely be you know, smeared into one another without too many ill effects because we're not going to probably get much mud. And then remember I added that one color, this one with one drop of silicone in it because I don't want to make a ton of cells artificially. I want the paints to also make their own cells, but <clears throat> and actually, I'm going to have to move this paint down a little bit, to be honest. I just keep, I have too much at the top and I keep getting, um, I know I might just have ruined this whole thing, who knows, but there's too much paint up there. And there's not enough at the bottom. I don't know, I just wanted to play and paint all day, so forgive me if that's what I just appear to be doing. <laughs> it's just playing, I'm so sorry if you guys are just here to watch me play and paint. Oh, thank you Julie and Deanne, I appreciate the two of you so much. I appreciate all of your support, it really does mean a lot to me. Alright, let's try this again. Probably the best thing would be to have your paper towels on the side that you come off of your painting with so you don't do what I just did, like mess up the white or drip on the canvas, but I guess I like to live dangerously or something because that's what I keep doing.
Now, this might not turn out now because of what I did, <clears throat> but I think it will. Still have faith that it will. I like the boldness of this um, color palette. I like these big sweeping, this is actually one of my favorite um, swiping tools. It has a round edge and a square, and I don't know, there's something about it. I love the way it catches the paint. And then this is my second one. Now if you see on what lies beneath, that's a painting I did. This shape right here made this crazy guppy looking fish head, and uh, ever since then I just... I don't know, I have a strong affinity for that one. So what happened when I dumped the colors down to get some of it off is I ended up losing, uh, it looks like I'm going to end up losing some of the bottom colors that were popping through. It's okay, I can still go back and add um, little bits here and there if I want. And another thing about swiping, you don't have to make it perfect. Um, I personally like the drama of having little bits of the original kind of shining through. I love this white right now over, over this whole thing is pretty, pretty beautiful. So, this is really fascinating how it's turning out. Now, in my perfect world, I would already have a balloon blown up for this. So I could, uh, let's see, oh my gosh, it's so pretty though, the way it's, <laughs> it's uh. Because a balloon would be really pretty for that top part. I gotta look at it like this for a second, even though it doesn't fit all the way on the camera. Here's another thing, sometimes when you're swiping, you know, take go ahead and take a chance without wiping in between. And when you do that, that's how I got that effect right there. I didn't wipe in between. And then I slapped it on the white. And look what happened. I got that beautiful... I just love this so far. So the question is, now, you know, when... When do you stop? When do you keep going? Clearly... Um, you know, there's some that would just stop right here. This would be a beautiful uh, negative space piece. I think it would dry. It's going to dry really pretty. Um, I'm in love with the little cells that are popping up down here. I, I do need to finish this bottom part and I would probably need, I should probably use <clears throat> maybe a neutral sort of color like the Payne's Gray so as not to disrupt the flow of the pattern that I see down here. But you know you still want to finish the painting so when your buyer gets it they don't have their canvas hanging out because that's no, not cool. Oh no, man. I almost just want to leave it. It is so pretty. Um, this is so beautiful as this deep, these deep wine colors are starting to just peek through here and there. Yeah, 
I don't know. Well, I think balloon rolls would look amazing to draw these two together. What do you guys think? I think, I mean, they would look really pretty. It would. There's just no doubt. I wish my table was, I wish my setup was a little bit bigger. I really want to work on it, uh, not in landscape mode, but in portrait, but I can't, so. I'll tilt it this way so I can see it another way. Um, all right, I think I'm going to do just a couple of balloon rolls. Like, not anything serious. Oh, I see the whale. I do. How cool is that? Yeah, I think just maybe a couple balloon rolls, just a few, not enough to really um, detract from the... I love the flowing movement, and this is kind of ghostly. Thank you, Annette. Thank you for the tip. I really appreciate it. Oh, Schmears, Gail would love that. Yeah. She, um, she's awesome with those, isn't she? I'm going to try to blow up this glove and tie this all off right here. You know, I don't do it very well on camera, so... I think I'm, today might not be the day either because honestly, lack of oxygen makes you really weak. I have felt not the best today. Oh yeah, there's no way, no way I can blow that up today. Not like that, I'll have to do it the other way. I wish, I'm going to bring you guys in. So hopefully you can see. I want you to see some of the pretty things that are happening with this painting. Oh. Let's try again. Well, that was not helpful at all. <laughs> totally not helpful. These videos are, you can absolutely go back and watch them if you want. So, you know, if there ever is a time where you just miss it, you have to run, you want to go back and watch what happened, absolutely, you can come back and watch. They all get archived. The comments sometimes do and sometimes don't get archived. It just depends. <clears throat> Look at what's happening with those edges over there. Is that not pretty? Yeah, Shanta, if you missed the first part and you want to see what happened in the beginning, that's one way to do it. Now the thing about silicone, I like the cells and then they start to get weird to me. And I know a lot of people like the look of silicone cells, but I don't know. I mean, they're not my favorite. Christina, tell them about your new fall colors. Carrie, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate that. And 
Laura, I try so hard to represent, to be representing artists. Like I, my channel from the very beginning, that's something that I wanted um, to do. It's something I've always wanted to do. And I tried doing it from the very beginning. So let's see if, gosh all right I have this almost done you guys thanks for your patience really I promise the next time I'll already have this balloon blown up it's crazy that I make you wait that long there we go oh thank you Laura I really appreciate that. Yeah, if you guys don't want to mix up your own mysterious, guess who has one just like it? That you can just buy. Christina Welsh. Christina has mysterious and you can just buy it. So you don't even have to mix it up or buy anything but just the paint. And Christina's paints are really beautiful. So, all right, this is a big balloon. I must have been overcompensating <laughs> for something because it turned out really, really, really big today. All right, here we go. It actually is better if the paint sits for a little tiny bit before you do balloon rolls. Sometimes I think they used to turn out better because I used to contemplate what I wanted to do with my painting and I would step away sometimes from the process. Um, so now don't be mad but there's a little part here I'm just not a fan of and I'm going to swipe over again and that's okay. You see something you don't like, change it because it's your art and nobody gets to tell you what is beautiful or not. It is your art. And personally, I love that now. <laughs> so I'm really happy that I made that decision just now to do that. And here's the other one I want to do. So as I let those sit and kind of marry, I noticed some changes that I wasn't just a huge fan of. So now I'm really, really happy. And I'm going to have to turn this painting around because my balloon rolls don't work on my left hand. My left hand is not very smart when it comes to balloon rolls. I just got one way to do them, <laughs> and that's it. So, my right hand. And so if I ever lose my right hand, the function of my right hand, y'all know no more balloon rolls because <laughs> I won't be able to do it. <laughs> Maybe. Ooh, this is so pretty. I can't explain. I, I think you can see it on camera, but wow. I haven't had a balloon this big in so long, I don't even know how to grab it. I'm going to try to loosen it up a little bit. Very pretty. Now I'm wiping this off in between. Oh, look at that. It just pulled that red out with that last one. 
Just a little spot of red there. So pretty. Oh. Yep. I love that. Oh my gosh. See, I'm so glad that we just decided to do this because I'm just loving the look of that. I know I'm going to mess up the beluga if I do that right there. That whale is really cool, actually. It's really, really cool, truthfully. One thing you can do, so part of the reason why I'm wanting to go over there is because <clears throat> I want to pick up some of the red from somewhere and deposit it somewhere else. But here's the, here's the thing. You don't have to mess up your painting to do that. I'm going to just take a little bit of the red here, and I'm going to drizzle it on my balloon. I'm going to do a couple of different shades here so you can just see. There's no, it's just random, it's just no specific pattern or anything. This is just like, just a fun way to, so <clears throat> now I got some reds on here. Um, I'm going to mix in some white too. The purple, they're all handmade. All of these pigments are handmade. I literally took the color mixing chart and I found the color purple that I liked on here um, and I just made the color. So I cannot tell you what the purple is. I'm sorry. I do highly encourage people, however, learn how to mix paints. <laughs> Learn how to mix paints. Why do I say that? Because you're, you'll just make yourself such an amazing artist if you learn how to do that. It's valuable. It's really valuable, those lessons. And, um, wow, that is so pretty. Uh, Christina says write down the recipe. Um, eventually, maybe I'll get to the point where I can do that. Um, yeah. Who said Andy was invisible? Anne, I never said you were invisible. I literally just answered your question. I, I'm assuming you're talking about the question right here. This purple, I only have one purple on this board, so I'm assuming that's the question. And that's the purple, and I just explained how I did it a couple of times. Okay, you're not invisible. You're never invisible to me, and you should know that already. <laughs> Ever. All right. I'm, I am I'm in love with this. I, I'm done. I don't want to do anything else. I think this painting is gorgeous. I'm, I'm extremely, extremely happy with the way it looks. And I'm going to set it back so nothing happens to it. I just take a piece of parchment paper on uh, one of these baking trays like that you buy at the restaurant supply shop. And then I set the painting down on top of it. and. Uh, I do have a baking rack that I can use for drying. Um, I don't use it right now because I haven't been painting enough to really warrant using it, but I'm in love with this painting. And you don't hear me say that very often about my own work. <laughs> I like things a lot, but that one uh, speaks to me highly for some reason. Okay, now I, I think we should do one of these sculpted panels. Like a flip cup. I want to show you guys how they react with all the lines. All right, let me grab. So this sculpted panel here, oops. Ouch. 
Oh my god, three baking racks of dry paintings. <laughs> nope, I don't got the room for that. I do not have the room for that. There is just no way. So, I know I've already talked about these panels again, but um, if you missed the first part of it, I did, I just want to briefly show this, I did this beautiful piece, this sculpted panel, and it's sculptedpanels.com. Um, I'm in the middle of working on this piece. This was hand painted versus the other one being pore painted. Um, and I'm going to show you how I did a flip cup on this and how it turned out. How, how the process is of flipping on these panels because I just think these panels are made for resin. I just do. The panels are made of MDF board. Um, this is Water-23, so if you liked this style, you could go back and order it instead, instead of saying, I want the one with the squiggly lines, <laughs> because they all have squiggly lines. The thickness is 0.75, and the size is 8 inches. So it tells you basically exactly, if you love this panel and wanted to order it again, it tells you exactly what. Now, I'm going to do one with uh, red, um, alcohol inks. That's my next project. So, But the thing about the alcohol ink one is um, I want to prime it first. And I just uh, have been dealing with the, the state of emergency here. So I really didn't have a chance to prime and do all that. Although I've been working on that giant piece. If you're lucky, I'll take you to the other room before the end of the live and I'll show you. I've been working on the 36 by 48, y'all. And it is big. <laughs> it is massive. It is incredible. It is fun. And it is a commission. So, you know, I don't want to mess it up. I did show the panel from the side, but I'll do it again. There you go. Kind of get a chance to see the details of it. And we're going to do, like I said, I'm going to do a little flip cup here. The thing with berries, like all the red colors, you, it's like you always risk that you're going to end up with pink, and I'm not a huge fan of pink. This is why I don't do berry colors very often. But that's why I chose the swipe color to be Payne's Gray, because I thought if I do all of these berry colors with a really dark swipe color, I'm more likely to get something that I is not just going to be a completely pink outcome. I really don't want just pink, so. That was the choice for that. You know, I hope you guys know, if I ever, if you, I hope you never feel ignored coming here, but sometimes I do just focus on the art and I don't see the, um, maybe I put this in already, I don't know. And I just don't see the comments, so I hope you know just like Anne, you are not ignored. We we have two moderators doing an amazing job, Vandena and Cheryl, and we appreciate all of you coming. And there's a lot going on, <laughs> so sometimes in teaching and stuff, you end up um, not being able to acknowledge every person. So you guys can always uh, contact me any after the show social media. I'm all over social media. All over it. So you can absolutely do that and catch me there. I want to make sure I put just a 
real good layer of white over this red so that when I add the blue here, maybe it'll stay. Hi, Crafty Chicken Mom. Are you guys doing okay up there in Seattle? The color mixing chart, there's one, I think, in my Amazon shop. And there's also, I got this one at Dick Flick the other day. I just bought it on a whim because I've been wanting to explore mixing colors. Um, and this is not the one that I wanted, but I can't think of the name that I wanted. The name of the one I really want to get, so I bought this one. Um, and that's how that worked out. I have no idea. This is way too much paint for this little panel, I believe, but we're going to go for it anyway. All right. Now remember, the only color in here that has any silicone is one single drop in the molten metal uh, color. I got to take a drink of tea here. Mm. And we're just going to flip cup it. Now see, it's not a normal flip cup because you got the textures there. And in this case, I found with the other panel, it's almost like I really do need to um, have a little bit more paint than maybe normal. And this is the other thing I found out. I need to move it around a little bit. Otherwise, what happens, it kind of just gets stuck in the panel, or in the, yeah, in the curves of the panel. And so I need I needed to kind of distribute it a little bit, let's say. I'm going to actually help this out a little tiny bit by picking some of this up off of the board and also helping it's it's this it does feel different it doesn't feel like a regular canvas it's not the same um, but it is fun and they do turn out really pretty and I'm definitely not mad at the the, the couple that I did so far I'm gonna draw some of that Payne's gray through there because I forgot about it I forgot about even putting it in the cup so I'm just gonna real quickly bring some of that into this painting. Well, I asked the guy if the panels needed to be primed, and the owner, and he said, if it's for alcohol ink, yes, you can. And um, I did tests before I did this. And what what I found is if you're pour painting, it doesn't need to be primed. I didn't find that it cha it disrupted the process at all. Um, so no, but if you're doing alcohol inks, I think yes, you do have to prime it, absolutely. But for pour painting, no. Now here's the issue. As you turn, as you tilt, normally we have a lot of control over where the lines are going and it's kind of based off you know how we're tilting and everything we do not have that control because all of the little ridges in here um, make us make it so we don't get to do that so it is unfortunate I just saw that pretty pattern on the board and wanted to pick it up and put it on here if I could <laughs> I know it's silly but it may not even stay, but sometimes I just, I'm like, oh, that would be pretty. Um, this is not Christine, Christine the um, turquoise. This is just a homemade one that I made. So you do kind of have to be mindful. And you, I found that it's just better just to go quick. This is just me. You can go really slow, but you don't really have a lot of control anyway so it's almost like just go quick 
and then once I pick a direction, I kind of stick to it. For, I try to cover as much as possible, and then I'm just sticking to it. Because as you can see, as you turn it, you, you start to get those backwards, forwards lines, the things that make poor painting um, not have a lot of, let me think how to say this, composition. And I think that's one of the things that I want to try to avoid. So instead, I'd really need to go back and cover this area more, but instead of doing that, I'm going to actually tilt it all one direction. And that actually plays up the line, or the, uh, sculpt, the sculpted panel part. And then I can just always go back and pick up some paint from the board. Yeah, that's pretty. So like right here, I'm going to pick up some paints that would highlight that area. And uh, let's see what would look good there. It needs to look natural. Um, so I just find an area on the board here that would look pretty. Let's put some more of that turquoise on there. And I can just, so I can always blend this in too to make it look more natural. Because right now, of course, it looks like it's a little transplanted, right? But it's not hard to fix, I don't think. Thanks for finding that information out, Vendena. I really appreciate it. You guys are so awesome. I love my moderators, man. I could not do this job without them. And you guys know, they just do it out of the kindness of their hearts to support the channel and to support the arts. So is that not amazing? I love you guys. Thank you so much for doing that. That's pretty, don't you think? Wait till that has resin on it. Maybe resin with alcohol inks. I just think that's so pretty. The one thing you have to be certain is that there's not too much paint resting in some of the um, dents or whatever you want to call them, some of the sculpted part of the panels. So what I did with the other one is I just took my finger like this and I pulled it out. It actually kind of makes a pretty little design too. Um, but if you do that, it's possible it will crack, just like any poor painting that has too much paint on it somewhere, you know. So I just take my finger and I just dip it in there and pull and that just releases some of that paint from any of the deep grooves. Now this, I've never worked on this particular uh, panel before so I'm sure as you go through you start to kind of find the panels that you really enjoy working on. Some of them look like waves. Um, this is so, I'm sorry, this is so gorgeous. <laughs> I'm like. I'm like in love with the color schemes today. I think I really wanted to paint and I really wanted to do berry. So I'm pretty happy right now with the way this is looking. I'll try to put resin on it this week so that next week when you come back you'll be able to see the results of how it looks with resin on it. Um, maybe some resin alcohol inks would be pretty. Yeah, really, really, really pretty. 
Well, you guys, it's 621, and I'm going to do one thing and that, that I promised to do, and that is I'm going to take you down from the camera. I'm going to take you into my office. I'm going to show you the giant painting that I'm working on because I was asked to do so. Sharon Mansfield, this is for you. <laughs> yes, everybody wants to see the secret room, I'm sure. You are going to hear the sound quality change as I unplug you and take you down. I'll take you. Ooh, look at that, though. Isn't that pretty? You guys get a little bit... Uh, a little clue of what my studio looks like. It's organized, but disorganized is kind of how it goes. This one is drying beautifully. Yeah, I'm in love with that so far. Here was where my, whoops, here's where my resin project was yesterday. We got some pretty paintings on the wall. And then we have the it's called The Shelf. It's um, just a myriad of paintings and all kinds of things. And then we have the wall. This is the wall of things that have not sold, but are, or have sold, but they're just not finished yet. And brushes and tools. And then, <laughs> you guys do not need to see all of my house. Here we go. Oh, the lighting is terrible. But here is the secret room with the giant, giant painting. It's impossible for me to actually show you because the lighting is so bad right now. Let me see if I can turn this light on here. Hold on. There we go. Look how pretty. So this is an undercoat and it's all metallics. And this is going to be a dip, you guys. A 36 by 48 dip. Well, that's what's happening with that one. Um, I want to thank you guys. Thanks all of you for being here. And I appreciate each and one, every one of you. And um, let me say goodbye. Thanks so much. Moi. I appreciate all of you. And I appreciate you coming. And take care. I hope you have a, a safe weekend and I will try to see you next Friday five live we'll see how it goes I hope I'm not evacuated but love you all so bye-bye